Thank you, Ron. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Greg. I want to welcome all of you who are gathered here in the TCC. And I want to welcome also all of you who are joining us right now on Facebook Live. Um, and as well, those who perhaps uh, later today or in the course of this week will be watching uh, the streaming of our, our service. We are gathered together for worship this morning. And as we... Uh, Enter in to worship. I want to invite you to stand as you're able. Let's share in our responsive call to worship. Come, let us praise the Lord. We praise, we praise God, God with, our with our whole hearts. heart. God's works are great. Open, Open our, our hearts and spirits, spirits to see your works, O Lord. Lord. Come, let us worship the Lord who has saved us. May our lives reflect the wondrous love of God that all may see and know of God's greatness. Let us sing of that greatness in our, our opening hymn this morning, Majesty. Majesty of his majesty unto Jesus be our glory honor and praise majesty kingdom authority flow from his throne unto his own his anthem raise so exalt Lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify, praise Jesus the King. Majesty, worship his majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified. Unto Jesus be our glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne unto his own, his and the praise. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify, for Jesus the King. Majesty, worship in majesty. Jesus who died, come glorify, King of all kings. You may be seated. I invite you to join with me as we pray together our opening prayer this morning. Lord Jesus, here we are gathered, full of our assorted cares and concerns and troubled by the challenges that face us. We have come here in the hope of gaining a sense of peace, yet we also know that you may come to us with gifts we didn't think we wanted. Sometimes when we feel your presence among us, it is a disruptive presence. Sometimes you speak a word to us that we really didn't want to hear. Come to us, Lord Jesus, not as we might want, but as you know we might need. Come to us. Speak to us the words we have been loath to hear. And push us down your path that we've been reluctant to tread. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, bring it on. Amen. 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 Let us take a moment to offer the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to one another as we turn and wave. Good morning. The peace of Christ be to you and to all those on Facebook Live 
The peace of Christ be with you. God bless you this day. At this day, which is the last day of January, we stand on the threshold of a new month. And uh, may God bless you each and every day, each day in the month to come. Let me share these reminders of how we're in ministry as a congregation. One of those uh, ministries is the, the stewardship, the care of our, our facilities. And uh, right now, the focus of that care is on getting a lot of our spaces and places uh, painted, touched up. Uh, you'll notice that there are little uh, splotches of white here and there. It's not that somebody's gone through and, you know, just said, you know, let's make this interesting. <laughs> It's part of the process of uh, some primer and trying, uh, Jim Ackerman is doing a fantastic job of matching uh, the new paint with the old paint. And so uh, trying to blend that in. That's ongoing. We just ask that you kind of be mindful of various signs as certain rooms and portions of the building are kind of blocked off as that, as that work continues. I want to let you know that there will be a Lenten Bible study, uh, Bible and book study that's going to start um, with a service on Ash Wednesday. That's February 17th. More about that in the weeks to come, but we're planning that Wednesdays from about 6 to 6.45. We're doing that. Also, the, uh, the Wednesday noon study is going to be uh, working with the same material, a resource called Surprise the World, that our uh, folks across the annual conference here in North and South Dakota are, are participating in. Our Bishop Lori Haller and the district superintendents will be recording videos that will um, serve as part of our, our study. So that is upcoming, and uh, we'll have books available uh, starting in the coming week. Uh, speaking of this coming week, our youth are going to be very busy on Thursday, late afternoon into evening, as they are serving the community banquet at Southeast Pier United Methodist Church and Community Center. And uh, there was information in the bulletins that uh, uh, Elaine had printed out or emailed to you. We're asking for your help in providing some of the food that is needed, um, especially chili. There is a sign-up um, feature to be able to indicate your willingness to provide chili for this meal. And uh, you can use that link uh, if you've got a digital copy of, of this information. You can also give us a call in the church office. We can take that information. That's 224-5939, or you can email any of our youth leaders. Uh, we do ask that uh, if you're fixing chili, please get it here to the church by Wednesday evening at, at 7 p.m. Have it marked uh, for the, uh, the banquet on the 4th so that uh, we know specifically that's what it's for, and uh, we'll get it to where it needs to go. Confirmation classes are going to get underway starting on the 21st of February, continue through uh, February, March, into April. We ask that uh, for those who are going to participate to RSVP uh, by February 14th. We're, we're focusing on a curriculum that uh, will cover our, our current 7th graders, and if we have others in middle school, others in high school that haven't had opportunity to go through confirmation, you're also invited to be a participant in this confirmation series. So um, be in touch with us. Let us know if you're planning to participate. And as we've been sharing over the past few weeks, uh, the response of our community is ongoing in terms of the fire victims from the Edgewater apartments. Simple response at this point is call 211. Call 211 if you want to help in some tangible way uh, other than probably financially speak about that in a moment, but uh, give 211 a call and say, I want to help uh, with the victims of the fire, and they can direct you to the most, most current pressing needs. Uh, in terms of financial support for the victims, you can provide gifts through Peer First, United Methodist Church. Just simply mark that your gift is designated for the fire victims. You can also provide a gift directly at Oahe Federal Credit Union as they're managing uh, the financial response uh, to those needing assistance. And then on February 14th, Valentine's Day, we're going to make that Sunday 
uh, a Sunday in which we take an offering of love. We're going to uh, focus particularly on receiving a special monetary offering that day uh, that will be then shared with the folks in Oahe Federal Credit Union for the uh, response. We are, we are responding um, with tremendous um, eagerness as a community. We received a thank you from uh, the Peer Area Referral Service this past week, thanking us for our part. But I want to—I I know that this is not just us, but it truly is a community-wide peer, Fort Pier area response in seeking to fill the gap, uh, cover the void uh, created by this tragic fire. Got a couple of thank yous. I want to uh, lift up thank you to those who have helped clean uh, the snow out, chase roofing for the lots. Uh, Craig Solberg, Don Hepfer, and Eric Stash for uh, the walkways. And I want to thank Joanne Hippel for getting all of our pyramids cleaned uh, this past week. Next Sunday, February 7th, is going to be a communion Sunday. So we will have those elements available here in the worship service. If you're going to be gone or uh, listening from home, watching on Facebook Live, and want to have elements at hand to participate, we invite you to stop by, uh, pick them up either today if you're here, uh, or in the week ahead, if anyone would like to have elements delivered, please let us know. We would be very, very happy to do that. We want to turn to Ron Smith, who has a musical offering for us this morning. You raise me up.
Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you very, very much. So I got a message to share with the children this morning. Looks like we've got the Corman children over there. So hi. We said hi earlier. Say hi again. So until any kids on Facebook Live this morning, hi. Uh, I brought something from my office this morning. This hangs on the wall. Uh, I guess this is my official uh, certificate that gives me authority to be here and to stand here this morning and to lead in the service today or lead, in, lead on any other Sunday. This is my, what's called a certificate of ordination as an elder in the United Methodist Church. So there's lots of complicated words and, and uh, uh, definitions that go along with all this. Let me just say that this is kind of like, uh, it's kind of like my license <laughs> that says it's okay uh, for me to be here to preach. In fact, it says uh, by the authority of Bishop William Lewis, who's one of our retired bishops, that as of the 14th of June, 1992, that was just a few years ago, uh, that, uh, that under the authority of uh, Bishop Lewis, and under the providence, first of all, of Almighty God, Bishop Lewis, who as a bishop in the United Methodist Church, have by imposition of my hands in prayer, in other words, he you know, placed his hands on my head, and, and he prayed, and here's what he prayed. He said, Set this one apart for the work of an elder to read the Holy Scriptures in the Church of God, to preach the Word of God, to administer the Holy Sacraments in the congregation. Now here is the, here is the thing that says that I have a responsibility for this to be, for this to be good, to be effective. It says, so long as this person continues to be a faithful servant of Jesus Christ and adheres to and teaches the gospel of our Lord and the doctrine of the church. So it says, I have authority. Authority to read scripture, to bring a message, uh, to teach. But it also says that I need to stay connected to Christ. Stay connected to Jesus. That that is where the real authority comes from. Because Jesus said that he has been given all authority and power. What does that mean? To have authority. To have authority. Well, didn't, didn't quite hear it. To be able to do something or tell people yeah, it, it says that, okay, you're, you're somebody that should sort of know what they're talking about. I think about, you know, a driver's license gives us the authority to drive because somewhere along the way we've proven that we knew how to drive a vehicle, right? Except when they say you have to take your driver's test again, we go, oh, wait, 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 I took that once, Right? Right? You don't want to take it again. But the driver's license gives us the authority to do that. Uh, your, your teachers in school have authority because they have a teaching certificate, right? In fact, you as students, even, even in grade school, middle school, have authority in a sense because maybe you get a report card that says that you have learned a certain subject. Or along the way, you might get a diploma. Sometimes uh, students get a diploma when they graduate from kindergarten or from, from middle school. Or certainly you get a diploma at high school graduation that says that you have a certain amount of, of knowledge and experience and you have the authority to go on to the next thing in life, whether it's work or, or, or more education. You have the recognition that you can talk about these things, you can teach these things, you can do these things. 
Now, what's most important is that we have the authority, not just to know a particular skill or how to do our job or drive a car, but that we have the authority to share the love of Jesus. And Jesus gives us that authority. He asks, though, that to love with his authority, that we always stay in love with him. So that as we're connected to him, we can share that love then with other people. We have the authority on good word, the word of Jesus, to love, to show kindness, to show mercy, and to help change our world to be the world that God wants us, wants this world to be. A place of love and peace and understanding and the welcome of all people. So love with the authority of Jesus. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for sending us Jesus to show us the way, the truth, and the life to see how we should live and how we should love. And may we stay close to him that we can draw closer to others. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue in prayer this morning as we, uh, we lift up uh, our prayers and pray for folks in our congregation. Uh, before we enter into a time of prayer, I want to make a particular mention that... Uh, in our prayers, we're praying for the family of, of Glenn Perry. Tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. in our sanctuary, we will be uh, hosting the Perry family as they gather to give thanks to God for Glenn's life. Glenn passed away this last week um, after complications following a liver transplant in Sioux Falls. And so I would ask that you would uh, keep uh, Glenn's wife, Darlis, and uh, their children in your prayers, and uh, Glenn's parents, Dave and Judy Perry. Join me in the spirit of prayer. A few moments we'll share together in the Lord's Prayer. We think we know so much of God. And with our meager knowledge, we think we can sit in judgment of others. We, uh, with great pride, announce our own righteousness without a compassionate thought. We proclaim your word when, when it's convenient and often only to those whom we want to be around. We shut out others because of our faulty judgments and, and our blindness, physical blindness that turns away from those that we know, we know you're calling us to minister to. Our spiritual blindness that that doesn't allow us to see the needs at a deeper level. Lord, there have been so many times in which our humble help would have been a blessing to someone, but we've placed our comforts before serving others. We've turned around and around and around trying to find a way to live, and we've missed the path you've placed before us. Help us, merciful God, to again listen to you. Help us to truly open our hearts to you. Remind us again of your great love and presence in our lives. Forgive our foolishness and our stubbornness. And create in us new spirits, filled with your love, offering peace and hope to all. Lord, we offer peace and hope and healing and comfort for these whom we name before you this day. We pray for the family of Glenn Perry. We pray healing prayers for Elizabeth the Temple and Marilyn Teske, Catherine Hammond, Virginia Barnes and Penny Gallinet, Jenny Van Bockel, Andy Walls and Jen McIntyre and their baby Owen, Jen Johnson, Mike Bondhorst, Rose Molson, Gaitha and Robert Tenike, Nancy Sterling Newhauser and Ray Newhauser, August Nyhart, Alan Wink, Shelley Nielsen, Tori Rattlingleaf, and Les Trout. Al Christie and Dean DeGoyer, Chad Strophus and Delora Bennett, Edda Wharton, David Wilbur, Nancy Howard and Jane Howard, Penelope June Geigel, and Nicole Chesky and Brad Maskovich. We pray for all those who are dealing with the COVID virus in quarantine, 
those experiencing infection and all those families that are grieving because a loved one has passed on account of the virus. We pray, Lord, not in the strength or authority of our own name, but in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. And we unite now in praying the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading for today is from Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. Jesus and his followers went into Capernaum. Immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and started teaching. The people were amazed by his teaching, for he was teaching them with authority, not like the legal experts. Suddenly, there in the synagogue, a person with an evil spirit screamed, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. Silence, Jesus said, speaking harshly to the demon. Come out of him. The unclean spirit shook him and screamed. Then it came out. Everyone was shaken and questioned among themselves. What's this? A new teaching with authority. He even commands unclean spirits, and they obey him. Right away, the news about him spread throughout the entire region of Galilee. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's join together in our song, How Great Is Our God. I invite you to stand as you are able. Splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. seated. Let's pray. 
O oh, great and mighty God, as we take a deeper look at this passage for today, I pray that you would give us understanding, inspiration, application for our lives of, of your word, and that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts would be acceptable in your sight, for you, Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Once, two men recited the 23rd Psalm. One was a well-known actor, the other an old and rather uh, unsophisticated minister. The actor's rendering of the psalm was beautiful and commanding. Everyone enjoyed hearing the rich words of the beloved psalm spoken in his clear baritone. All the inflections and pauses were perfect. Then the old minister spoke. He, he stumbled a bit, and the words were, were broken with un, unnatural punctuations of, of silence. But when he finished, there were tears in the eyes of the listeners. Something had happened, and it was the actor who gave the interpretation. I know the psalm, he said, but this man, this man knows the shepherd. The actor spoke with knowledge and skill. The minister spoke with true authority. My friends, we are living through a time in which tremendous struggles are underway, involving many issues on numerous levels of government and society. Much of it centering on who has the power, who has the authority, and who has the knowledge, who has the right to claim the higher position with each of these specific factors. In Jesus' day, there was, as in ours, an abundance of contentiousness. Political leaders jockeying for greater power and control, religious groups sparring with each other and doing their best to navigate the forces in play to advance their particular agenda. There were occasional wild-eyed would-be leaders who sought revolution but only brought disaster to themselves and their followers. There were controversies, rumored conspiracies, veiled systems of secret knowledge, all stirred in the mix. And into this mix, Jesus enters and begins his public ministry. Very early on, he visits the synagogue at Capernaum a small fishing village on the Sea of Galilee. He teaches. He teaches like no other. He teaches with authority. Boy, they were sure surprised by Jesus. We don't know the exact content of his teaching, at least not here in Mark. We just know, according to Mark, whatever Jesus said was impressive, and it was impressively stated. He certainly knew. He certainly knew what he was talking about. He did, because he spoke with authority, for authority is grounded in God, and Jesus, being God, was as grounded in God as you can get, and still carry human flesh. The words and deeds of Jesus most powerfully testify to the authority and the source of such words. God is the source of the authority of Jesus, and that becomes evident in the words and the works of Jesus. This is the difference between Jesus and the scribes, or as our translation today said, the legal experts. They taught too, but they didn't have the authority, the inherent authority, authority that Jesus did. They were the persons who read, studied, and interpreted the Torah, the sacred books of the law and determined how those interpretations should be applied, but they lacked authority. Perhaps they were wishy-washy in their interpretations. Perhaps they came across as, as one of our late Methodist preachers here in South Dakota, who years ago made his mark by always ending his sermons with this disclaimer. But then again, what do I know? That leaves you with a real sense of, well, yeah, I can take that message home today, right? <laughs> i got to think about that for a while. Okay? 
Jesus could teach with authority because he was fully grounded in God. He was fully connected. And in that connection, there was power. Power. For authority is empowered by God. The something the scribes lack is the empowerment of, of God. Today's passage from Mark shows the difference between the empowered authority of Jesus and the kingdom that he seeks to bring and the unempowered authority of the scribes. Jesus' empowered authority is about to be tested, though. Because as soon as the folks in, in the synagogue were turning to each other with their expressions and their remarks, wow, this isn't like listening to the scribes. Man, this guy is something special. A man with an unclean spirit disrupts the proceedings. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. It's interesting to, to note that while the good folk in the synagogue are trying to figure out who in the world this Jesus is, the demonic entity speaking through the man knows exactly who Jesus is and that he has authority and that he has power. In direct and fairly harsh terms, Jesus commands the spirit to be silent and to leave the man. Following a few moments of convulsing and cries, the spirit leaves and the man is free and is at peace. Those watching all this unfold double down on their earlier comments. Wow! A new teaching with authority. He can even make the unclean spirits obey. Bishop and Professor N.T. Wright has said that if we're not careful, we'll read these accounts of Jesus as somehow spiritual, otherworldly, and subtle mental, rather than read Jesus as Mark presents him. Jesus has come as a new king to claim a kingdom. Power is shifting. God is taking back what belongs to God. So there is disruption. Shouting, rebuke, and crisis, even in the place of worship and holy teaching. For Jesus has come to proclaim a kingdom empowered with the authority of God. This is not a kingdom created by prideful and calculated human design. People who witness this authoritative witness can tell the difference. The church needs to be reminded of the source of her authority and witness. It becomes easy to know the words and to, and to mimic the work of Christianity. However, people know the difference between what is authoritative and what is not. In the long haul, the false or unempowered witness will be found out. It's not just what we say, but what we say and what we do. What we say and what we do that matters. The writer Travis Franklin points out the question this text poses for the church today is who is the source of its ministry and witness? Mark wants to be clear to those who will listen that the words and deeds of Jesus are connected to God who, who empowers them with the authority and a kingdom, kingdom that is here, that is now, that is forever. If the church today is to preach, witness, or minister to the needs of a hurting world, it must do so with an empowered authority, thus ensuring the consistency between what it says and what it does. According to, according to Mark, people are going to know the difference. They're going to know the difference. True power and authority are tied to Jesus. Pastor and preaching professor Dr. Don Sanukian describes this in a never-to-be-forgotten experience came out of his own personal life. He shares, about 20 years ago, I had an experience that opened my eyes to the reality of spiritual warfare. While I was sound asleep, I heard the phone ringing, or so I thought. In the darkness, I grabbed blindly for the phone, but I was so groggy that I couldn't really wake up. When I put the phone to my ear, I heard a voice, flat and menacing. He just said, you thought we'd forgotten you. On the phone, there was just silence. But I was sure he was still there. My mind was racing to think, who, who wanted to hurt me? Who wanted me to cower in fear? 
The man who got angry a few weeks ago when we wouldn't give him money? I was getting very scared. I sensed this was something dark and diabolical. I couldn't even speak. But somehow I simply blurted out, Jesus! And suddenly, the fear left my heart in my bedroom. I came wide awake and I realized I did not have the phone in my hand, that it was still across the room, yet I knew that what had happened was more than just a dream. I had felt the presence of real evil, the presence of the evil one. But now, after calling on Jesus' name, I wasn't frightened. As a matter of fact, I was exhilarated at the power of Jesus' name. I got up, turned on the bathroom light, washed my face, and cleared my head. Then I went back to bed. Surrounded by the presence of Christ, I felt a great peace. As I was falling back asleep, I heard a melody in my mind. It was beautiful, like a lullaby. I recognized it, but couldn't place it. The next morning it came to me. It was a tune from Les Miserables. And the words, which I didn't even fully know then, are, You will keep me safe, and you will keep me close. I'll sleep in your embrace at last. I've always felt that my Heavenly Father hummed me to sleep that night. That night when the power of Jesus' name conquered the evil one. As the imperfect delivery of the old preacher reciting the 23rd Psalm revealed, Dr. Sanukian knows, he knows the shepherd. My friends, the authority of Jesus Christ, our shepherd, our shepherd, commands us to listen to him, to follow him, to stay fully connected, and to imagine a new world. This imagination is so needed. Travis Franklin reminds us, like the ancient people in today's scripture lesson, we are tired of the same old ways of thinking and being. We have heard the words with us so long that they have gone flat in our souls. Love your neighbor, care for the least, show mercy to all. We know, we know this language well enough, but something is lacking between the words and the deeds. We need the authority of God to set us free to begin the exciting and dangerous work of imagining a new world. Perhaps it would be better to say that we need the authority of God to free us to use our imaginations in a new way. It takes imagination to create weapons out of words that we lob at each other. And it takes imagination to create communities of healing. It takes imagination to rob people of their dignity through corrupt systems. And it takes imagination to offer everyone the opportunity to live as a child of God. The question is, Will we submit our imaginations to God's authority? I promise you this. As we do, we will. And this community, these communities that are our home, will. They will not. They will not cease to be surprised by Jesus. We pray with me. Lord, we come not seeking our own power and authority, but we seek the authority and power that is found in you and in you alone. May you reignite our lives in our ministries with one another, in our ministries with our communities and beyond. That in our lives and in our work and in our witness, our neighbors will see the authority and the power of Jesus. For it is in his name that we pray. Amen and amen. Friends, this morning, one of the ways in which we offer that empowered witness is through the sharing of our gifts. And I remind us that we can do so this morning, uh, sharing our gifts at the baskets near the 
um, exits uh, here in the TCC. And also we can do so as we share gifts by mail, in person, uh, electronic giving, digital giving. It is a way in which our work, our work grounded in the authority and the power of Jesus, finds tangible expression using the gifts that God has already provided to resource that work. I invite us to uh, stand and sing our offering of praise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Holy, awesome God, we bring gifts of paper and coin, symbols of our gratitude and our love. Bless these symbols that they may become the acts of love and grace. Bless us and our gifts that we may transform the world with love and grace. In gratitude and hope we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. My friends, Jesus comes to us offering healing and hope, speaking and acting with authority and exercising godly power. Listen to him, follow him, receive the authority and power he shares with us to work for God's kingdom and to offer the witness of our faith. Go into this world confident in God's love and healing power. Go in peace and may God's love and peace always be with you. Amen and amen. Let us sing. There is power. Wonder-working power. Blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood, would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's blood. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Wonder working power 